So today we're going to look at installing IMC on Linux. So officially IMC is supported only on Red Hat Linux. Check the release notes. Uh, today we're going to be using uh, CentOS. It's binary compatible but not supported. This is great for labs but probably not good to do in production environments if you'd like support. So let's take a look. First we're going to install Linux. So basically we're going to assume you've already downloaded the media and uh, you've got it ready to install. So from the install disk, click on the install, skip, there we go, found local installation media, we're going to through this fairly quickly, next, 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 basic storage device, yes, discard any data, we're going to put in the host name, and again, I think it's it's important here to remember that uh, what I'm showing you is a test and proven. Um, I know a lot of people in Linux um, do things their own way. That's okay. This will show you what's uh, what's necessary. So configure network. And again, this is a step that people commonly miss. It's hidden there in the bottom left-hand corner. Uh, we're going to make sure we connect automatically. Manual. Assign the IP address. So again, this is your NMS, so you probably want to make sure that you've got your um, NMS with a static IP address. That way you can lock it down with ACLs. Um, you know it's not going to be changing around on you. You may want to look at doing DHCP reservations, but static is just the easiest way to go here. Um, put in an IP address for an external uh, server. Um, depending on, on how you've got things set up, um, you may have an internal patch server that you're going to be able to run from. Um, I don't, so I'm just using the, uh, the default internet servers. Um, root password. We're going to put in the root password here. Click next. I am going to select use all space. Again, if you've got preferences, um, feel free to use them. But again, I'm showing something that is tried and proven. Uh, and if you choose to change things, be aware that that may break some of this process. So uh, this is your baseline to be able to make sure that you understand what will work. So now we've logged in, we're going to do a more on the Etsy um, network scripts, sorry, an Etsy sysconfig network scripts, if cfg dash eth0, uh, we're going to make sure that the, the IP address was actually assigned properly here and um, everything is good to go. So we can see that on boot yes, type ethernet, IP address, everything's great. We're going to do an if config just to make sure we're good and ping hp.com. We have DNS resolution. That's great. So the next thing we're going to do is VI and edit the host name. Um, there are portions of the installation that are going to reference the host name, and if the host name is not uh, input, the installation will fail, plain and simple. So we're going to go in and put the same IP address we assigned, 10.101.0.198 in my case. Um, give it the host name, so IMC all-in-one Linux, AIO Linux, there we go. Uh, colon X, save that. We're now going to ping it just to make sure that we've actually got the host name proper. There we go. Name resolution is working. We're good to go. So next thing we're going to do is we're going to do all the installations. So what I've got here is all the commands that you're going to use. Again, you might want to just pause and run those through one by one. We're going to log back in with the right password this time. We're going to do yum update dash y. And again, I'm not going to make you guys watch all this through the, uh, the glory of uh, some ruthless video editing. This is going to magically be very quick, right? We're going to go to the next one. yum install glibc.i86 or i686-y and again that will be magically quick yum install libgcc.i686-y yum install libs tdc plus plus dot i six eighty six dash y yum install lib aio dot i six eighty six 
dash. Why? Unzip. Um, you're going to require this if you choose to download and unpack on your IMC server. You may not need it if you have another way of uh, getting your files. We're going to do a yum group install x window system. Put that in quotes so you're going to be able to find it and fonts. And again, this is a fairly large one, so we'll do some, some harsh editing here. Most important, just make sure you got complete after all these. Perl, there we go. Perl is installed, so that was a yum install perl-y. We're now going to do a yum install mysql-y. A yum install mysql server-y. And then for my purposes, again, I'm going to pull the, the installation package over by FTP, so I'm going to make sure FTP is installed, and Telnet as well, which IMC will use uh, later on, so it will actually leverage the, the default Linux Telnet. And there we go. All our packages are now installed. So for the purposes of the installation, we're going to just disable security and make things really easy on everybody. Um, again, we understand. There are times you want to go back in and change this back on. If you look in the release notes and the readme file, if you want to turn back your, on your firewall, uh, you're going to be able to go in and, and create all your firewall exceptions. That's great. Um, for the purposes of this, we're just going to turn it off to make sure that you can get the system up and running and then start locking it down afterwards. SE Linux disabled, colon X. We're going to do the service IP table save, service IP tables off, so, sorry, stop, and then chk config IP tables off, there we go, now with the IPv6 firewall, so IP6 tables, save, we'll spell that right this time, service IP6 tables stop, check config IP6 tables off. So now we're going to do the MySQL initial setup. So these are the commands that we're going to be running. Um, we're going to log back in. Type in the right password again. Sorry for the sloppy typing today. We're going to do a service MySQL D start. Now that that's up and running, we're going to do a user bin, sorry, uh, check config MySQL D on. Now we're going to do user bin secure MySQL installation, uh, sorry, MySQL secure installation. Enter the current password for root. Enter for none. You should have none at this point. Um, please set up your root password for your MySQL installation. That's a, that's a good idea. And, and please don't use the password I'm going to be using. You'll see that soon enough. Um, we are going to remove the anonymous users. We're going to remove, um, disallow re root login remotely, um, remove the test databases, all those things. Okay. Now we're going to go in and grant privileges. So mysql-u root-p, put in the password, grant all privileges on star.star to root at single quote, percent single quote, identified by the password that you just set. So single quote, in my case, not a hard one to guess, with grant option, semicolon at the end. You're going to want to make sure you get the query OK there. We're going to, again, create now a second user, which is going to be used by, for IMC specifically to log in. 
So we'll call it IMC user at quote percent quote identified by whatever the password we want it to be. So in my case, I'll, uh, I'll probably just use the same password here. Again, security recommendations, you probably don't want those to be the same. But, um, you know, your call, flush privileges, semicolon, good to go, slash Q to get out. Okay. So now we're gonna, going to get into the portion where um, things tend to go wrong. Um, common typos in this will really make it so that you're not able to install uh, IMC. So again, these are the commands that we're going to use. You can go back, click pause on this if you want. This is all in the uh, documentation as well. This is specifically what's going to go in your my.cnf file. So we're going to log in. Um, we're going to do uh, make dir dash p slash data slash mysql uh, underscore data. So that, again, this is what I'm choosing to put the mysql databases in. Um, I'm going to copy over the the default directories over. There we go. I'm going to change ownership. And there we go. Signing ownership to MySQL. There we go. So now the easy way to do this is we're going to make a backup of the existing default my.cnf.old. And then we're going to copy from uh, user share MySQL, the my-huge.cnf file, and move that over to the Etsy directory and, and create that as the my.cnf file. So we're going to use that as the basis for our editing. So vi etsy my.cnf. So we're going to go in, uh, we're going to comment out the first socket here, and we're now going to point it that the socket's going to go to the slash data slash mysql data mysql.soc. So again, this is in the client section of the my.cnf file. And again, we haven't even gotten into installing IMC yet. This is just preparing the base environment, right? So um, this is really, really critical. If you make typos here, MySQL may not even start. So you need to really make sure that you do this properly. Um, any errors here may result in either an error showing up. Um, I have seen in some cases, if you make uh, typos in this particular file, you might not even get an error. It just might not start. So again, we really need to make sure that we type everything in properly here. And so we got our max connections, we created our socket, um, character set server, Latin one. And again, this is all in the documentation. Default storage engine. There we go. Lowercase table names, NODB buffer. Sixteen meg. The data directory again. We're going to push this to the data directory that we had previously created. And the last thing is to go down here to the bottom and to comment out the log bin equals MySQL dash bin. Okay, call an X, save the file. We're going to do a start MySQL D, or sorry, service start, uh, service MySQL D start. And it has failed. So we're going to go into the MySQL, the data MySQL data directory, and we're going to do a list. So if it had created an error here, um, we would usually see this as an error log file. We're not seeing anything, so I'm going to uh, do a little check in. So after having looked at the file uh, offline, 
as I said, it's very common for uh, people to make mistakes here. So as you can see, what I've done here is instead of default storage engine, I typed engineer, right? So we're gonna, going to uh, edit that out, colon X to save the file, service MySQL D start. Now that's okay and everything's good. So now we're going to uh, look at installing IMC. So we're going to flip over to an X11 client and make sure we have X forwarding turned on. So in my case, I'm going to be using my Mac and we're going to type in uh, SSH dash L root dash capital X for the X forwarding and the IP address. Put in the password. You may be, uh, may be requested to accept the SSH key here. And I'm going to go to the temp directory. I'm going to open up an FTP and I'm going to have to change my directory here to get to the right. Um, the right folder, admin, root, we'll log in. Okay, I'm in the FTP file. I happen to know it's files, netman stuff, software, imc 5.1, I'm going to do an ls and get the one that I want and type in the name here. So HP IMC Plat 5.1. Through some editing magic, we won't let that uh, take up too much time here. There we go. Transfer complete. Close. Now we're going to do an unzip. HP IMC tab complete. There we go. Through the magic of video editing again, we'll do that. Um, important thing here is uh, go and look in the manual directories. All the files, the installation files, the MySQL files, everything is right in there. So um, you don't have to go back out to the HP support page to find those. They're actually included in the installation package. So now we're going to go into uh, Enterprise Linux install and do a dot, uh, an sh dot slash install dot sh the X window session opens we're going to check the installation parameters so in our case we're not using Oracle we're going to make sure all these have passed we're going to change the Oracle to MySQL we're going to change the u super username to the IMC user this was the one that we recreated with the grant commands password so that's that uh, pound PA 55 WRD pound um, if you choose to change these, these are the port numbers that will be accessed later. Super users, not the default super user, that's okay. We did grant all those privileges. And we're going to click yes. It's going to check the database connectivity. And now it's going to start installing components. And again, magic of video editing. It's done super quick. Start IMC server now. Click OK. So we're going to go over and check the process tab to be able to tell when it's finished. Um, the process that you're looking for is the J server process. Once that is started, and you see here it's in the process of starting. Once it's started, you will be able to access your, your IMC server through an HTTP interface or HTTPS, depending on the port numbers. There we go. It's started. So now we're going to open up Firefox here on my Mac. And we're going to go HTTP colon whack whack uh, 10.101.0.198 colon 8080 slash IMC. If I wanted to do the HTTPS, I would do HTTPS colon whack whack 10.101.0.198 colon 8443 slash IMC. So again, those port numbers at the very beginning. Um, that designates either the HTTP or the HTTPS interface. We're going to put in the default username and password of admin and admin. We're going to click login. And there we go. Um, IMC is now up and running and ready to discover your network. Hope you guys found this useful. See you guys next time on the next IMC management tutorial.